Hi, and welcome to PowerViews. I'm Dan McDade, your host and president of PointClear. On PowerViews, I have the opportunity to talk to interesting and knowledgeable experts who offer solutions to some of today's toughest marketing and sales challenges. My guest today is Chris Snell. In 2000, Chris took a break from the world of social services to begin a career in sales. Over the next 10 years, 10 plus years actually, Chris progressed from generating leads to successfully managing multiple lead generation projects. Chris then moved into digital marketing. In 2011, desiring to build a team from the ground up again, Chris moved to Care.com Business Marketplace. Chris is currently the inside sales manager of the business marketplace. Chris, welcome to PowerViews. Thank you very much, Dan. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Well, first, you know, tell me a little bit about care and the business marketplace. You referred to it in some of our conversations and dialogue as the uh, Amazon of care-related services. So I was just interested in your in your business to start with. Sure, absolutely. So Care.com started about six years ago, uh, where we wanted to be a destination spot for families to find quality caregivers. And um, so what we were doing was we were connecting um, the individual families with individual providers. And a couple of years ago, we thought what a great opportunity for businesses to have that same uh, chance to reach out to those families. So uh, the business marketplace was born, and uh, we do a couple things for businesses. We, do, we, we help them to get new employees uh, through our recruiting solutions product, so they're able to tap into that uh, individual provider uh, market that we have, and then we have advertising options where they can reach out to families who post care needs. Um, and so it's been exciting. We've been able to grow the team from uh, from five just at the beginning of January this year to uh, we're we're at 13 now, hoping to be at 17 by the end of the month. Wow, and and that's the outreach to businesses, and I guess uh, the fees are involved in terms of the recruiting fees or the advertising fees, but yeah, it yep, really exactly. helps you extend, you know, um, really. Uh, solutions to people who need care, and I'll tell you why I'm particularly interested in this. I have an 85 year old mother, okay. and we had to we had to hook her up with the angels, which has been a, a blessing. But um, she obviously needs even more help, so I'm going to be on your website as a as a customer here um, very soon. Okay. Um, well, you have a background, you know, really steeped in, you know, what what is my passion, which is demand generation or prospect development or lead generation, yeah. whatever you want to call it. What have you seen in the way of changes even this year as far as inside sales and marketing is concerned? You know, what have you seen so far in 2013? Sure. So one of the things that I've noticed is that um, there's that, you know, obviously there's a huge push for social selling. Um, there's a huge push for utilizing the tools that inside sales reps have at their fingertips uh, in terms of LinkedIn, in terms of Twitter, um, and in terms of you know Facebook marketing. I've seen such a huge push in that. I think back to when I you know when I was on the phones, I didn't have that. You know, I was lucky to have an email address, and hopefully the email that I crafted was uh, was good enough to get somebody to respond back to me. Um, and I think another sh shift that I see is. Um, shifting more from uh, even larger so our national sales reps the folks that we have here for the business marketplace they work inside as well so they're not you know they're not traveling out and, and visiting customers they're doing a lot of their work over the phone and uh, so I think those are two two big big shifts that I see um, two big things that I see you know moving forward for the year yeah I guess uh, Jonathan Farrington from top sales world said that he felt like about 20 percent of field sales jobs were going to disappear every year for the next three years Yep. And that that was going to be, you know, half of those jobs going inside and half of them just, you know, simply being eliminated because of the efficiency of an inside sales force. So yeah. I, I agree with you on that. Um, you know, talking about your people, um, you know, obviously we're both in a people business and um, people have challenges. Uh, you know, what are some of the most important things you can do as a manager uh, to kind of care for and support your inside team? Yeah, so there's there's three things that I think that are really important for an inside sales manager to do. And number one, it's obvious, it's coaching them. Um, this is something that I'm on a journey to learn to get better. I certainly don't um, think that I'm the greatest coach out there, so I have a lot to learn. But I definitely think um, coaching is, if we're going to make our people better, um, the only way that we're that we're as managers going to be able to do that is, is to be better and more effective coaches. Um, so I think of you know sitting in with an inside sales rep and, and listening to the conversations that they're having with with the prospects. And my hope is that while I'm sitting with them and we get off the call and and debrief about the call, that I'm able to point out things that maybe they weren't noticing, um, and and help really help coach them to be more effective on on the next call. Um, I think the second thing that um, that inside sales managers can do to 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 better their teams are. 
um, motivate, obviously. Um, you know, that's what we're there for is, is to motivate a, a team that's on the phone constantly selling all day long. And, and while it's certainly not, um, it's certainly not the easiest job in the world, um, it, it can get tough sometimes. And, and motivating an inside sales team to, to achieve their goals uh, and keep in mind that, you know, if a sales rep has a bad day, if they have a bad stretch, uh, it's the inside sales manager's job to motivate them. And then the last thing is really guard their time. So um, I know here at CARE we have a lot of meetings. Um, there's lots of meetings that go on. And so my job is to make sure that I guard my people from being taken off the phone so that they can hit their goals, so they can achieve you know, the things that they want to achieve and earn the commission that they want to, want to earn. So I think those are three things that, um, that inside sales managers can do to, to really help, help better their team. How much, as far as motivation is concerned, how much of that do you feel um, is or should be financial versus other forms of motivation? Yeah, th uh, that's a great question. So I think it all depends on knowing your rep. So I have some reps who are only motivated by money. <laughs> so if I put a money goal in front of them, I know they're going to get it. Um, and then I've got other reps that are motivated by other things. Um, an iPad, for example. Right? We have a we have a. a uh, spiff this month for iPads, and you know if reps hit a certain threshold, uh, they earn, you know, they they can earn an iPad. So we're going to see what that's like. We're going to see, um, you know, see if that motivates them. I've worked with other people who, you know, some guys that are right out of college, they want the latest video game, right? They want a PlayStation, they want an Xbox, and now with PlayStation Four and Xbox One coming out, you know, I'm sure I'm going to have some people saying, hey, can can that be a spiff? You know, can we can we do something for that? I think it really depends. It's um, it it, it it's knowing your rep. That's how you're going to find out what motivates people is spending time with them and learning about them. What what percentage, just out of curiosity roughly, yeah. what percentage of the business that you generate is is coming from sort of an inbound response versus just a really proactive outbound, uh, you know, cold call or email? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So um, I'd say the majority of the business that that we uh, that we are signing up, that my team is signing up, is is more from an inbound perspective. Um, it's different though. It's not an inbound like you might think, like like um, HubSpot, for example, right? They're talking about content development and, and using that content to bring in customers. Um, we're finding people coming to our site. They sign up for a basic profile. It's an opportunity to get their business listed on the site. And my team, what we get the you know the benefit of is getting all of that information and all that data and reaching out to those folks and um, you know and talking to them about the benefits of becoming a feature provider, giving them all the uh, you know the bells and whistles that they they get along with that. So yeah. the majority, you know, our most successful campaigns are when we're calling inbound stuff. And when you know outbound gets such a bad rap these days, you it know, does. Why, why do you think that's the case? And and you know, how do you feel about what you hear? Yeah, I think it gets a bad rap because, you know, it, it's it's not expected. Um, I, I think when you're calling somebody who is not expecting your phone call, uh, you're seen as an interruption, and you're seen as um, as creating a. Um, a roadblock for them to get on doing what they're doing on their day. I think sometimes what people forget is that, at least in the B2B space, we're not calling people at their homes, right? We're not interrupting dinner. We're not doing anything. We're, it's a business, right? I'm, I've got my business. You've got your business. I want to see if my business can fit with your business. Can what I'm selling and what I'm offering, can that help you? And if it can, uh, then, so then, you know, fantastic. And if it's not, um, you know, we'll, we'll move on. But I think it gets a bad rap because it's seen as, uh, you know, it's seen as negative in comparison to the inbound community. That is, you know, they're they're pulling people in. I think both of them have their, I think both of them have their place. For example, if we've got folks that, if we're launching a brand new vertical, and let's say we want to break into, um, I don't know, let's say we want to to break into uh, pet lessons, right, and, and pet training and things like that. Well, nobody's going to know that we have that offering unless my team gets out there and starts calling and starts drumming up some business. Yes, we can develop content, but how long is it going to take that content to, to pull people in? It might not take long, but I know my team can get a jump on it faster than, you know, than a, putting some content out on the site can do. Yeah, speaking of your team, um you know, what do you recommend? We will get a certain number of individual contributors that will watch this uh, discussion. What do you yeah. recommend to them that would help them improve their performance? Sure. So I think there's a couple things. Uh, there's a few things, actually, that I think that, that they can do to perform uh, to perform better. One, I think I like to say suit up, right? It's they dress up. You know, if you, I know that when I'm dressed up, I feel more productive. I feel like I'm, I'm more ready to work. We have a really relaxed atmosphere. Um, I certainly don't require anybody to dress up. But I know myself that, you know, when I was on the phone and I had the opportunity to, to dress up, it, it just felt better. So I definitely suit up. 
Um, stand up is another thing. Um, I know that for me, uh, when I'm standing up and speaking in front of an audience, I feel like I can project better. I've got a, you know, I feel more vocal control. And I think that when an inside sales rep has the opportunity to stand up, and it might look a little silly doing it, especially if you're the only one standing up in a whole group of cubes. <laughs> um, but I think you feel more confident when you're standing up. Um, and then another thing that they can do uh, is, is something I would call sign up. So. Um, a couple years ago, uh, I got a sign from um, from a, a, from Connect and Sell, and it was a sign that said, "You know, please do not disturb. I'm I'm selling." And uh, while while it, again, it might feel kind of silly if you put that up. You know, if you put up a sign and let everybody else around you know that you're working and you're not to be disturbed, I think it sends a message. Um, and I think it sends a message of uh, I'm really serious about what I'm doing, and, and I've got I've got some stuff to do. So please don't bother me. I think if sales reps did that, if inside sales reps um, did those few things and and gave them a shot, I think they'd probably see themselves perform a little bit better. So suit up, stand up, and sign up. Okay, yeah. I like I like those three. Yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned social selling just a little while ago, yeah. and um, you know, I um, I read an article this morning that said that you know you can't tweet yourself into uh, selling more. Yes. <laughs> but but um, so how do you kind of you know how do you obviously you're a fan of you know the so-called social selling, and I think probably you like me probably probably live in LinkedIn every day. But yes, you know what el- what else? What are your other thoughts about social selling? You know, are you a social selling uh, believer? Yeah, so I am to an extent. So here's why. For my national or for the, you know, it's not my national team, but for CARE's national team, I think social selling is on point. I think um, spending time in LinkedIn and, and researching your um, your prospects through Twitter um, and, and through Facebook marketing, things like that, I think it, there's, a, there's absolutely value there. What I'm noticing from my inside sales team, and we're calling with some of the smaller SMBs, really the mom and pops, mm-hmm. you know, the busy daycare that's next door, they're not, um, they're not as... Um, I don't want to say tech savvy because that's a disservice to them, but but they're I don't think they're there yet. So I, I think if my team spent their morning researching folks on LinkedIn, I don't think they would be as productive as if they just picked up the phone and started calling um, yeah. or shooting emails. You know, there we've got customers that span the gamut. We've got people that are you know that that understand their own SEO value and their own um, you know websites and the importance for having that. And we've got folks that don't have a website at all. We've got folks who say, well, how are customers going to contact me? I I don't have a cell phone. I, I just have a, a, a you know a landline. Um, some folks who I, we have to teach where the address bar is on you know on a, on a browser. <laughs> so I don't think for my team anyway SMB for sell, for social selling. I don't think we're there yet. Um, I think uh, my my um, my market might be a little bit behind. But certainly for our national team, I, it's it's uh, totally uh, invaluable. And would you say would you rank it um, with LinkedIn at the top of the heap, pretty much, or what else yep. do you think that is used? Yep, definitely, um, definitely LinkedIn. Uh, there's, I, I don't think there's a better there's a better way to find contacts. I don't think there's a better way to find you know quote unquote the right person to talk to than LinkedIn. I mean, obviously, you know your your standard Google searches and things like that. Um, and then Twitter. Um, I'm not. I, I don't know if that's really the place yet to to reach out for prospects. Um, and again, that's just my it's just my experience. I know yeah. that there are a lot of folks. Um, Jill Rowley's, a, you know, she's an amazing social seller. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Coca Sexton, right? All those folks that are really good yeah. at social selling. Um, and I just don't know if my if I'm in that same arena with my, um, you know, with my industry. Yeah. Well, we all just keep chipping away at it. Yeah. I think is the yeah. truth. Um, well, what do you see? What are some kind of key takeaways as we wrap up here? As what you're looking at in 2014, how do you feel like things are going to change? Um, you know, what are some highlights of what your expectations are for 2014? Sure. I know for, you know, for my team for 2014, we're looking at, um, we're, I'm looking at trying to gamify what they do. Um, I kind of feel like I'm a little bit behind the times on that, um, but I think it's exciting. I think it's a, it's an interesting topic. So certainly looking forward to, um, to putting something in place to help my team grow. Right now we've got, we got a big whiteboard, right, that tracks all of our information and tracks who's on top. And I really want to digitize that. It makes me think of that Seinfeld episode where George is selling out of his dad's garage. Um, you know, that's, and we've got that big whiteboard in there. So I want to move from the garage, um, you know, I want to move to a big, you know, a big screen and, and have a, a big dashboard up there. Um, and then as far as um, 
productivity. It's really just making sure my team has what they what they need to to be better. Um, and I really feel like as an inside sales manager, that's my job is to serve them, make sure they've got what they need. Um, and and for my team right now, those are things like lists and automating the uh, automating the sales process through a CRM. We're on Salesforce now. We're looking to hop into a bigger version of Salesforce. I know my team's really excited about that. Um, so yeah, I think that's I think that's what we're looking forward to in 2014. What are, what are some of the, I should have asked this a little while ago, but what yeah. are some of the key metrics that you measure there, just, you know, the highest level key metrics? On yeah. So the highest level that we measure is um, is total bookings. Um, we used to be a, a unit based, right? We used to say sell X number of deals, um, and now we've transitioned the, the team to more of a, of a total bookings number. So we track total bookings, we track in-month bookings, and then uh, for new hires, I'm tracking uh, the amount of dials that they're making a day or activities they're making because I include emails um, with that. Also tracking the amount of conversations that they're having. Um, but I've noticed, and one of the changes that I've seen is that uh, for myself, I've been shifting away from more of an activity-heavy uh, KPI um, focus to really what are they bringing in. And if I have a rep, I've got a rep right now, she's for the last, I think she's six months in, she's doubled her goal every month. Um, and so I don't care if it takes her 50 activities a day to do that, 80 activities a day, or 20 activities a day. If she's doubling her output, I'm happy that she's doubling her output. So I'm not going to, you know, have a heavy hand on her in terms of making sure her activity is there. Because at the end of the day, what I'm responsible for is that revenue number, and however I get there um, is, uh, you know, certainly okay by uh, by me. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we're we're very similar. We look at the. Uh you know, first of all, we look at the the output, which is in our case sales opportunities, and then mm -hmm. then conversations, and then dials, and then talk time. Yep. And you can you can always trace it back. You know, so you tell somebody, look, all you have to do is be productive, and nobody's going to look at anything else. So, yep, that's totally right. agree with you there. Yep. Hey, if the if if a member of our audience wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Great. Uh, yeah, I'd love to talk to anybody out there. So um, you can reach me at um, on email at csnelljr at gmail dot com. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at Chris underscore Snell, S-N-E-L-L, -L. Um, and I'm on LinkedIn as well. I think, um, I, don't, I don't know what my LinkedIn address is. I think it's, <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, LinkedIn slash Snell Chris or something like that. Okay. Well, but so I'm they, there. You can find me there. Yeah, they, they can look it up. And um, yeah. Well, listen, Chris, thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Well, I enjoyed the conversation, and, and, and good luck with the CARE. That sounds like a really valuable organization. And um, So for now, this is Dan McDade signing off on another edition of Power Views. Thank you for watching.